Good to be in the house of God tonight. Yes, it is. I, I don't want to look over anyone, but I, I just happened to see her sitting back there a little bit ago and, and thought of her and Brother Glenn, you know. And, but, you know, time takes care of things. Don't truly go away, but it takes care of things. But it's just good to know the Lord tonight. Amen. Is, good to be in the house of God tonight. I'd rather be here than Christmas yes. shopping. Yes, sir. By all means. Yes. Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, listen to me, devil. Tell you what I'm going to do. Well, you walked on me long enough, and I'm going to walk on you. I'm so tired of you, devil. And you can't be bound to Lord. Bye. 
Hallelujah. Let's give our Jesus a big hand clap tonight. Hallelujah. Best friend I ever had was named Jesus. Hallelujah. I tell you what, one of the greatest benefits of being a child of God is knowing Jesus and knowing the mercy of the Lord. I tell you what, you know what, I was guilty as charged. And you know what, I was beaten and left half dead on the side of the road. But you know what, Jesus come by and he picked me up and he pulled me out of that place and he gave me a place, a good life. How many knows Jesus gave us a good life? And I'll tell you what, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, tonight's your opportunity to be saved. Hallelujah. Your opportunity to meet the Savior, the yes, King of the universe, the King of kings. Yes, His name is Jesus. How many come to worship Thank him? You, Jesus. Let me invite you right now. Thank Let's you, just raise our hands towards heaven. Let's just reach out to the Lord tonight. Hallelujah.
tonight. The privilege that we have to be here tonight. Thank you, Lord. Sparing our lives, God. God, minister to us tonight.
raise your hands and just lift your voice and him to worship him tonight. Hallelujah. Just praising him in a thousand of languages tonight. Just sing hallelujah. Sing it again. One more time. Hallelujah. To you, Lord. Love him, would you? Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Sing it now. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet and let's give Jesus another round of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Did you feel Jesus in our midst in the worship service? Hallelujah. He's here to visit with us tonight. Hallelujah. At this time, help me make welcome our pastor, Brother Keith. Give him a hand. Come on, let's just lift, the, lift up the name of the Lord right now. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah tonight. Come on, shout it again. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's just shout it again. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a mighty good God tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, let your voices. feel healing in here tonight. I feel strength. Come on, just raise your hands and worship him. Let God be your God tonight. Lord, we Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes.
let the power of God just touch you tonight, would you? In Lord, Everyone, would you just lift your voices? Yes, God. I feel God in this house tonight that amen he's walking these aisles the Holy Spirit is let him just to touch your life tonight God's confirming to you that he's a mighty God in this place tonight come on just reach out to him and hallelujah just let him touch you let him minister to you tonight by his grace and his power he's awesome God tonight hallelujah thank you for it Lord one more time would you just lift your hands up toward heaven and just thank him. Thank you for just this day and the blessings of the Lord upon this day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies today. We love you tonight, God. Praise you for your mighty hand. God, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Your burdens are being lifted tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Who knows that God's a mighty good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Scripture reading tonight is in 2 King or 2 Corinthians tonight. Amen. Come on, just worship him for just another moment as he puts up 2 Corinthians chapter 10 there. Hallelujah. 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 Still feel that strength and healing in here, just in your spirit tonight, where things have been trying to cause a great storm in your life. There's just a peace in here right now, a settling by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He's a mighty good God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord one more praise in this house tonight. Come on. Come on. Give him a solid rock shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. He's, a, he's an awesome, good God tonight. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians tonight, chapter number 10. So good to see everybody in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. How many of you it's good to be here? It's good to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to be here. Amen. Peter and them said, amen. They was on Mount Transfiguration. They said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Build a tabernacle to the Lord, one to Elijah, one to Moses. Amen, but that wasn't the way that God wanted it. But he's a mighty good God tonight, amen? Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a praise tonight, amen? Feel the Holy Ghost in the house tonight. Amen, hallelujah. Remain standing reading of the word tonight for just a moment. Amen. <coughs> amen. <coughs> Excuse me. The Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not earthly. They're not natural. The things of our warfare is not things that are even seen, but it's of the Spirit. Let me believe that. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down or the destroying of strongholds. God have mercy. Amen. Casting down imaginations. 
and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Now listen, folks, not just, amen, what, who God is, but the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Brother Tim, say the prayer tonight. Yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you give the Lord a shout of praise? Amen. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Amen. We had other things to had planned, but this is the way it goes, so that's way we're going to go with the Spirit of the Lord tonight. As I was praying and seeking the Lord this week, and as I was asking God for his guidance and, and, and the direction and, and the things that we're needing for this hour, for this time, for this moment of hour that we're in. How many knows that God always has a present word for your need tonight? I know that God always has a, a direction for you in the midst of the storm. How many knows that God is always in control regardless of the storm? But I want to preach a few minutes tonight about the weapons of our warfare. And you know, according to Ephesians chapter 6, 17, 18, to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Taking the helmet of salvation, the blessed plate of righteousness, having your loins girded about with truth, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, uh, above all, taking the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, always praying in the Holy Ghost or praying in the Spirit. So we, we, we know those pieces of armor and how that we, amen, amen, how we do this. But the Bible says tonight, amen, that our weapons are not carnal. How many knows that we've got mighty weapons tonight through the name of Jesus? And there are strongholds tonight that people, amen, that Satan wants to get a hold in your life or, amen, there's something, amen, that he fights you so hard with and it's called a stronghold. But tonight I want to tell you we do not need more charm. We don't need more elegance, amen. We don't need more personality, but we need the power of the Holy Ghost, amen. Can I get a witness in here tonight? Amen, amen, not just to impress somebody, amen, and devils are not impressed, uh, amen, with pretty words, but they are, amen, knowing the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the book of Acts tonight, amen, just go with me there for just a moment, in the book of Acts, amen, chapter number, hallelujah, we're going to preach a while on this, amen, Acts chapter number 19 and verse number 11, amen, there were seven sons of, of Sceva, Amen. And he, they were going. They were Exodus. They were high priests, and they were going to cast a devil out of a man. But Amen. When they begin to start to casting that devil out, they begin to find out that their power, Amen, was not matching the power of the devil. Amen. That shows me that their power was not of God. Amen. You can, you, Amen. The devil's not impressed. Uh, amen. But what you say, uh, unless you've got the goods, can we believe that tonight? So as I begin to preach here tonight, and we'll talk about them seven sons of Siva and more here just in a minute. But Paul is saying, uh, amen, right here tonight, by the grace of God, uh, casting down, uh, amen, imaginations and every high thing. Now when I look at this scripture tonight, uh, Paul is saying the enemy, uh, amen, is coming at our minds uh, as never before. Uh, in our thought pattern, uh, in our imaginations, how we think, uh, amen, through the, uh, our opinions, uh, and our, and our feelings tonight. But Paul is saying one thing. Uh, don't allow the feelings or the thoughts uh, that are coming against you uh, to be able to change you uh, from what you already know. How many knows the truth of God's word tonight? How many knows the power of the Holy Ghost uh, is the spirit of truth uh, and that's the only thing uh, that will combat the devil? The devil is a liar tonight. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Listen to this tonight. Knowing this, uh, this uh, that your adversary, uh, the devil, uh, as a roaring lion, uh, he's out there roaring, uh, walking about, uh, and seeking whom uh, he can devour. That's the devil's job tonight. Amen. Walking as a roaring lion, uh, seeking whom he may devour. Now, 
When we begin to look at this scripture uh, and we begin to understand, uh, somebody shout, we've got to pull down some things. Amen. These imaginations, uh, these things that the devil uh, is trying to cause us uh, to lose the victory, uh, we've got to rise up uh, and tell the devil uh, what God has to say about it. Now, how many of y'all think it here? How many of y'all think too much? How many of y'all ever reason too much? Amen. Instead of saying what? We reason by how we feel, by what we think or what we hear sometimes. Amen. And when we do this, Satan has a way, amen, of building a stronghold uh, or, or a place around us, uh, and he wants to hold us prisoner. We've got a lot of folk uh, that should be in the house of God tonight, and they're not because they have believed the lie of the devil. How many believes the devil's a liar tonight? How many knows he's a liar tonight? How many knows the devil is out to destroy it tonight? Amen. I don't want to just magnify the devil, but I'm telling you, he's on his job. And Paul said, you've got to stand and pull down these imaginations. In the Greek, the word imagination means, amen, this, the things that you argue with in your mind. How many ever argue in your mind? You don't have to raise your hand because I know you do. Somebody shout amen. You argue with yourself. You try to, mm. as one guy said, put all the pieces together. But this is a thing about it tonight. We need the mind of Christ uh, as we have never had the mind of the Lord uh, before we need that tonight uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, amen. The thoughts that Satan, uh, amen, he's brought, uh, he has designed, uh, amen, these thoughts that he has come to us with, uh, amen, he has designed them uh, to alter our thinking. Uh, as I turn the news on uh, and I listen to, uh, amen, to the, 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 the news and I listen to the, the political realm, uh, and if you listen to that side, uh, that's dark and wrong they'll convince you they're right if you don't know the truth they'll tell you the abortion's right they'll tell you this is right or that's right and knowing all the time God's word says it isn't but how many people believe in that lie now watch what I'm going to go with you tonight listen when you've got the knowledge see when God puts you in a place God establishes you God roots you Satan wants you out of that place in the will of God Adam and Eve, the Bible said, uh, amen, they walked with the Lord uh, in the cool of the evening, uh, in the garden. Uh, they walked with God. That means they had an open line. That's what the Bible says, pray without ceasing means that you have an open ear to hear God at any time, amen, through obedience. Nobody can pray 24-7. I wish we all could. Somebody shout Amen. I'm not saying that thing is, we, we need that. But amen. amen. The Bible said men always ought to pray and not to faint. What that is saying is you need to have that open line with God that you can listen to his voice at any moment, second time. Amen. Because we hear so many voices all day long. If our ears are not open to the voice of God, we'll start listening to things we don't need to be listening to. I told somebody this a while back. I said, uh, missing church sometime. I said, I understand that people do and different things, and maybe something comes up, there's a hindrance or something. I, I don't know what all. But I said, the more you miss, the less it bothers you. When you first started, oh, it, it upsets you, and you feel bad, and you may even cry. But the more you do it, the less you feel about it. Now, that's the same way as Satan. The longer he can talk to you, the less you are concerned with the truth because he works in our emotions and our feelings. He works in our circumstances tonight. Amen. I'm preaching a message to you tonight. Amen. Now, watch this. Satan could not, in the garden, Satan could not conquer Adam and Eve. He could not conquer them. He could, not over, he could not prevail against them. He even got into the serpent, uh, that spirit did, that lying spirit. Got into that serpent, amen, to persuade them and convince them and to beguile them. See, Satan is a defeated foe tonight. He's defeated in your life, amen. And our trouble this tonight uh, is not as much as the devil is that we listen to him. Anybody ever listen to the devil? Three of y'all, bless your heart. <laughs> but it's truth. And he'll get us in bad spirits. 
He'll get us in a melancholy spirit. He'll get us in a spirit, amen, that we rob ourselves of the victory and the blessings of the Lord. Uh, somebody ought to give God a shout of praise. Uh, in Genesis chapter 3 tonight uh, and verse number 1, uh, listen to this tonight. Uh, come on, somebody ought to give him a shout of praise because he is worthy tonight. Genesis chapter 3 uh, and verse 1. Uh, now the serpent was more subtle uh, or crafty uh, or trickery than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And, the, and he said unto the woman, yea, has God said, you shall not eat you sh- ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, can't you eat of everything? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Whoa, amen. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now they're in a conversation here. There's a warfare going on here. Can and I get a witness. Amen. The devil is penetrating his mind. To begin to get her to doubt what God has already said. Now, if Eve had believed what God said, she would not be talking to the serpent and questioning what God said. Amen. Now, Next verse, please, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not die. Now, that's, listen, when the devil lies to you and says, oh, it don't matter, it matters. Yeah. Woo. When the devil says, you ain't going to hurt nobody, that's a lie. When the devil says, it don't matter if you go that much or not. Just as long as you know. Don't go to the grocery store and see what you get. Somebody shout hallelujah. For God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, uh, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Uh, Now, Eve was here, amen. Listen what the serpent was doing. Uh, He was doing exactly uh, what Paul is saying here. Uh, And Paul was, amen. They were questioning his uh, apostleship. Uh, Amen. They were questioning if he was really an apostle because he was not one of the uh, elect of the twelve. Uh, But Paul was saying here, I know who called me. Uh, I know who made me. Uh, and I know who sent me, uh, and I know what I am, uh, and everything else I got to pull down. I got, woo. Now watch this. Look how Satan began to talk to Eve in this arguing, uh, in this reasoning, uh, in, in the opinions, uh, even with her feelings. Uh, he got her involved. Uh, I don't know how long it took. I don't know how many times they ha- had this discussion. Uh, I don't know how long it took him to persuade her uh, to the point, uh, amen, not only to start looking at the tree, uh, but she began to desire it. Hello? She began to desire something that God said, leave it alone. Now, amen, this is what God began to deal with me upon tonight. Amen. Brother, we need a revival like we ain't never had. And the only revival that the devil hates uh, is an outpour uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, He's not worried, uh, amen, about a service. Uh, He ain't worried about a bunch of people coming together uh, and singing songs uh, and even preaching. Uh, But when the Spirit is poured out, uh, when that anointing uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, is starting to be poured out, that's when the devil, uh, amen, comes in like a flood. You start progressing, the Spirit of God starts stirring in your life. Something begins to change in your life, and all of a sudden, hell will hit you from every corner. He'll fight your home. He'll fight your job. He'll fight your finances. He'll fight your body. He'll do everything he can to get you to say, God's not good to you. Why did God allow that to happen to you? Why didn't God take somebody that is wicked and ungodly and don't want to serve God and here God's taking somebody, amen, that loves him more than anybody anybody does. Well, that went over real good. It's the truth. 
Why does God allow things? And why does God do this? We're in a fallen world. Uh, amen. But God said this. Uh, amen. You've got a soul uh, and you've got a spirit. Uh, amen. The devil can fight your flesh, uh, but he can't touch uh, that inward man of you. Uh, he can't touch. Uh, somebody ought to shout yes. Uh, I believe the Holy Ghost uh, is getting ready to be poured out as Moses stretched that rod uh, over that sea uh, and he parted back. Uh, I believe the power uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, is getting ready to be poured out. And my God, uh, in a way uh, that's going to change our lives. Anybody want a revival? Anybody want a Holy Ghost revival? Anybody want a conviction revival? Anybody want a revival that will change you? Come on now. We've got to get to pull some of these strongholds down. Amen. You can argue with yourself and talk yourself right out of the victory. Amen. I told you the other night, I had somebody tell me, I had a preacher tell me. He said, I wouldn't even let some people in my church. He goes, he said, they've done wrong. He said, I, he said, I don't even want them in my church. He said, I wouldn't even let them in the door. I'm thinking, what's church for? Like, like, fella, you ain't never done nothing wrong. Well, glory. Now watch this, verse 6 on this. Somebody shout, praise the Lord tonight. Casting down these things. I don't know who God's speaking to tonight. But I know one thing. God gave me a message tonight to tell somebody, amen, these defensive structures that the devil's built up against you, the spirit of truth will tear them down if you'll let the spirit of God talk to you. Let me believe that. Folks, I'm going to tell you, pretty words ain't going to do it today. It's going to take the power of the Holy Ghost. It's them seven sons of Siva. They begin to call out whom Paul preaches. And them devils looked at and said, uh, yeah, we know Jesus. Paul we know. <laughs> but you ain't on the radar. <laughs> we don't even know who you are. You ain't, you, you ain't got anything to disturb us. And them spirits just jumped out of that old man, that old boy. And just beat them seven sons half to death, stripped them of their clothes, and they took off running naked down the road. Wow. Now, amen, but God's good. Somebody shout, God's good. And the woman, watch this, she saw that the tree was good for food. He began to convince her. The more she looked in the wrong direction, the more she got persuaded by another spirit. Anytime you start looking in the wrong direction, you'll start looking and say, well, it ain't too bad. I'm still saved. Yeah, but you put the thermometer in, and it's as low as it can get. It's good look. <laughs> Hello. Amen. So she cooks that turkey. She'll stick that fork in it. She, I said, looks done to me. She said, ain't done. Ain't done. See, some folks look pretty good on the outside. You stick the fork in here. No, oh, he still likes a long way. Well, that went over real good. Come on, am I telling the truth? Amen. Look at this. Amen. Everybody shout strongholds. The devil will start lying to you about something, and then God has said, no, no. I remember, and I tell this story, I've told this story many times, already know it, but when God began to tell me to, to quit my job, I, I told God, in my, you know, now I, I, I didn't verbally to the point, amen, I may have even said it a couple times, but I said, God, I can't. I mean, in my mind, I was going against what God said. I wasn't denouncing God. I was just saying, God, I can't obey this. How am I going to make it? God, the first time in my life, I go from $60 a week to $600 a week. And God, how can I do that? God, this ain't fair. <laughs> Lord, I mean, I get a check and I, I get a check. Somebody shout amen. Sometimes more than that. And I am blessed of God. And all of a sudden, God says, quit your job. And I say, God, I can't. I can't, God, I can't. And the more I looked at the world and I looked at the circumstances, I said, God, I can't. But the moment God said, it's your last chance, honey, it wasn't no question of that. Amen. Amen. I didn't have to call somebody and say, what do you think that meant? Huh? 
I didn't have to ask Sister Jean either. Somebody shout amen. I knew God gave me an ultimatum. It, it's not, you got to make a choice what you're going to do. If nobody wants to go as I preach that, i got to go on. Amen. If nobody don't like it, I still got to go on. Brother, we need a stirring in our soul tonight. How many we need a stirring in our soul? Because the devil will talk us out of praising God. He'll talk us out of raising our hands. He'll talk us out of a little shout. He'll talk us out of a running around. He'll talk us out of this. He'll talk us out of believing that God still heals. If we all die, God still heals because his word said, by his stripes we are healed and we're still healed regardless of what the devil says. There are some things you've got to settle and not turn back and look at. I hear people say, I ain't sure that Bible's right or not. Men wrote it. I said men wrote it, but on the unction, on the divine direction, as they was moved upon by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of Truth, and they wrote down as God began to speak to them. And tonight I've got a message that God is speaking to somebody. You need to pull down these strongholds. Amen. And rise up and say, I believe what God still said. I'm not going that direction. <laughs> she said the tree's good for food. Wow. Like she needed it. All the other trees had food. It's just good for food. <laughs> Hello? It's like this. Let me give it to you better than that. Sister Gail did the other night. Sister Betty did. Fixed us some fudge. Peanut butter. Chocolate. Covered pretzels. I don't know what that mother white stuff was. I don't know what, I don't know what they call them. What now? Okay. All I know is you put it in your mouth and it melts. Now, no matter how many trees in that garden, you eat one of them things and you stand on your debate. I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. Tomorrow I'm gonna pay for it. But Lord, and that little thing, that little that little chocolate and them peanuts in there, that thing, he said, "Taste me one more time." <laughs> one more bite, and you look at it, you say, "Uh uh," and you start to turn around. He says, "Wayne." Come back. And if you're not real strong and, and you eat supper at 4.30 and you're starving, you don't know if you'll live till morning or not, the hunger. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, I see the evidence. Don't, don't fool me. And no matter what else you've done, you'll go back. You'll get another bite. That's what this tree was doing to Eve when Satan got her eyes on it. I don't. Be, I believe this with all of my heart to the point when Adam and Eve and the Lord walked in the garden. Amen. I don't even believe that tree had had any a, any bearing on them to that point. He said, "Don't eat of it." I believe they was obedient according to Scripture, but one day. The knowledge of what God had said or the understanding of what God said, Satan began to question the knowledge of God or the knowledge of what they knew about that tree. See, what you know about certain things, Satan will question that. Well, glory, that's pretty good preaching right there. And then it was pleasant to the eye. That means it was good to look at. What that means is, as a child, you go into a candy store, everything in there, a child nothing, I can go down the chip aisle. Now, is anybody here live with me tonight? Now, I'm glad for some of y'all that's got this thing under control, like Sister Jean, she does. I mean, you know, she's my mother, her glory to God. 
Amen. It bothers me. Huh? It bothers me. No, you don't go, don't go, don't go that can, in that car and get that candy bar. Somebody shout amen. How many of you ever found a candy bar that had been eaten on and the end of it was dried out? You break that end off and eat the rest of the candy bar. You got a hold of you, did it? Amen. Listen, listen. The other day, I wanted some of those twist Frito Lay barbecue chips. The honey barbecue twist. And I looked, first of all, I was at Minute Mart, and I looked down the chip aisle, they didn't see any. I thought, well, glory to God, thank God they ain't there. Later that night, I go to Kroger. This is the God's truth. I passed that chip aisle up and thought, well, you know, I ain't going down it because I, and I just happened to turn that cart after I went down another aisle, went right back up that chip aisle, and you know they didn't have a bag of them? Kroger didn't. I stopped another little convenience store. I go get me a little bag of them. And they didn't have any. And I'm thinking, Lord, this has got to be you or something bad wrong. God, <laughs> I went to bed that night, them things dangling in my mind, but I didn't do it. Somebody shout amen. How many knows the devil will work in your mind? How many knows he'll work in your mind with different situations? Y'all listen to me? He'll lie to you about something. He'll tell you this and that. He'll tell you anything that you'll believe as long as it's a lie. Now, it may have some truth in it. It may have feelings in it. But it's still a lie. Now watch this. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye and a tree to be desired to make one wise. I don't know what she was wanting to be wise about. She lived in a perfect place. Uh, there was no stress. Uh, there was no sickness. There was no pain. There was no sorrow. There wasn't anything wrong. Why would you want to be wise? How can people serve God for 25 years and walk out and say, I'm quit serving God, don't believe it no more? They got lied to a lot for Satan to put them things in there. And he's out <coughs> as a rowing lion, seeking whom? How many of you ever thought you're strong? And then the devil hits you in your feet. What you're standing on, and you start questioning yourself, start questioning everything around you. Can I get a witness? But you got to run back to the Word of God and say, Holy Ghost, talk to me. Holy Ghost, talk to me. Amen. My reason, I, I, I cannot reason carnal things out with the things of God. Can I get a witness in the house? Hallelujah. But God said they was mighty through the power of God to pull it down of false accusations, charges, claims, uh, accusing someone of something, amen, of wrong or improper. Amen. Listen, folks, uh, amen, the devil will accuse you every day of your life if you let him. Because he's accuser of the brethren. Can I get a witness in here? Everybody shout, casting down. Say it again, casting down. Amen. Listen to what Satan did here. Amen. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, it's pleasant to the eye. This is her senses. This is her natural carnal senses. And to make her wise. Wouldn't you? <laughs> How many's ever watched the, the McCoys? It's an old, old show. You've got to be 50 years old plus to even, even know what I'm talking about. It's called The Real McCoys. Grandpa Amos, he come from West Virginia. And they moved to Southern California. They inherited a house. Somebody died. They inherited a farm. And 
have the grandpapa, Pappy Amos, you got to understand, from the mountains of West Virginia, nothing wrong with West Virginia, but in that day and hour, he didn't go to school. But his friend, elderly, elderly guy too, went to the library one day, and there was a new librarian, and she was about their age, but she, they got their eyes on her. And they began to, both of them want to court her or talk to her. And them two got into it, George and, and Grandpappy Amos. Y'all listen to me now? And they went to the library. George could read. Amos couldn't. But he didn't want the librarian to know he couldn't read. So he goes over and gets books. He says, oh, this is a good book. Oh, I've done been studying on books like this. To impress her. Hello. And he can't even read. He got one book that was about Greek literature and had, was in Greek. And the library said, you've read this? Oh, yes, this is my second, third time. Trying to impress. That's what the devil does. So George wanted to show Grandpappy Amos up. There was a sign up there that said no smoking. George looked at her and said, or looked at him and said, Amos, have you read that sign? Amos looked up and tried to read that sign. He didn't know what it meant. He took his hat off because he thought, took your hat off. All of a sudden, the librarian lady could figure it out, start to figure it out. He couldn't read. You know the devil tries to work on us that thinks we can't read spiritually? But we know what the word of God says. We can stand on it and say, devil, you are a liar. You are a liar. The day you eat that tree, you're going to die. Now, they didn't die a physical death, but they died. Can I get a witness in here? I want you to raise your hands and shout, I need the power of the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. I need the anointing of God in my life like I never needed it. Amen. I'm going to preach more on this Sunday morning. I want our young people, amen, I want them full of the Holy Ghost. Can I get a witness in this house? I want the Spirit of God to be poured out upon every one of our lives. Amen. That we're not sitting around, uh, amen, Let's listen to the devil more, but we've got to praise in the name of Jesus. Uh, we got to shout in the name of Jesus. Uh, anybody got a shout in here tonight? Why don't you stand to your feet uh, and give God uh, a shout of praise tonight and let the devil know, uh, amen, I'm still going to praise God. Uh, he's still worthy. Uh, he's still the great I am. Uh, he's still the king of kings tonight. Don't let the devil lie to you tonight. Don't let him convince you of something else. How many of y'all washed in the blood tonight? How many of y'all washed in the precious blood of Jesus? Amen. How many knows that your sins are forgiven? And that you're on your way to victory tonight. Because remain standing as they come to the music. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to pull down some strongholds. <coughs> when you pull down some strongholds, God will start moving in your life. He'll move in a greater way of your life tonight. Amen. By the power of God. Amen. Don't let him lie to you. Don't let him don't let him steal because the devil comes and I told y'all this so many times. The thief cometh not but what? To steal, kill, and to destroy. Now, I want you to listen to me. I've seen this so many times. I've seen this. I love people. I love everybody. I, I, I love going to Pentecostal churches. I was in a Pentecostal church, I don't know, eight, nine months ago. Maybe been a year by now. Come here, sir. Amen. And I needed prayer. My body needed prayer. I want you to listen to me for just a moment how the devil fights you. And I went up there to get prayer. Amen. And the pastor done a, uh, done an awesome job. I don't know who the guy was behind me. I don't know who he was. I don't know what he was thinking. And, and, and he was maybe just carried away in the spirit. Bless his heart. But he had a hold to me to a point. I was trying to, 
because he was going to throw me on the ground. Man, and I'm trying to hold myself because I, and I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to believe God for a miracle. Are y'all getting quiet in here? And I, I, I'm needing a miracle, and I'm just trying to survive. Him about to kill me. I'm thinking, God, I need a miracle. And Satan, you're doing everything to get me, my mind, away from what I need from God. Can I get a witness in here? The devil will rob you of anything that he can rob you with. He'll lie to you. How many times he told you, you're going to die or you'll die of a heart attack? Every symptom. Get. <laughs> Let me believe that. Listen, folks. Don't let the devil lie to you and rob you of your victory. Sister Jody, don't you just raise your hands right there. I feel something for you right now in the name of Jesus. God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, by the anointing of God. Whew. God, a miracle. Mm. Through her body, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Whew. God, I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. God, I think it'll be a difference. God, there's a moving right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, raise your hands and love him. Come on, raise your hands and love him. Come on, raise your hands and love him. Won't you listen to me just a moment? I feel the Spirit of God on this tonight. This is something else that don't happen much in church anymore. It's the discerning of spirits, and the gifts of the Spirit, and the word of knowledge, and the word of wisdom. But God, we need them back in the church today. How many believe we need them back in the church today? Amen. Hallelujah. There's, now we've all had our battles even this week. But there's two people in this building tonight that you have literally had a raging warfare in your mind. I, I ain't talking about just being ordinary, just doing anything. This is something that it even keeps you awake at night. Even when you go to sleep and wake, you'll wake up. And that'll be on your mind. And it'll grab you. But tonight God said there's going to be a peace for you in the name of Jesus. I don't know if you're worried about children. I don't know if you're worried about a husband, a wife. I don't know. It may be finances. It may be you're about to lose your home. I don't know what it is. God didn't show me that. But tonight, God wants to set you free from that tormenting spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost. If you'll walk down this front, I'm going to lay my hands on you. I believe God's going to give you a deliverance even of that torment and vexation spirit in the name of the Lord. There's two people here in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody else want to come? We got two here, but anybody else want to come? You're here. Still like I still feel somebody here. Amen. It's not come yet. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, raise your hands and love him. Come on, raise your hands and worship him right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. By the power of God. In the name of Jesus. No one all, brother Tim. Hallelujah. Come on, raise your hands and love him. Come on, raise your hands and worship him. Anybody just want to come? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil will bury you if you let him. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. These strongholds has got to go. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of that anointing. Help me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
God, that torment. That torment. I bind that spirit. It's got to go in the name of Jesus. By the name of Jesus. The God that Wayne Keith preaches about. Devil, you've got to hear it go. By that anointing. By the spirit of the living God. In the day. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the power of God. In the name of Jesus. These strongholds are coming down. Satan, you have no authority. You have no rights. In the name of the Lord. God, stir this young man. God, let the fire of God get a hold of him. God, put a zeal in him. Put a anointing in him tonight. God, by the power of God, I lay my hands. And as Paul did, Timothy, to stir up the gills. I stir the gills in this young man. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the anointing of God, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, by the power of God, by the anointing of God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you strongholds, you powers, you demonic forces, you have to flee. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hey. My weakness blurs my vision, my frustration just gets out of me. Oh, you see, it's then I am reminded. Come on, praise him all over this building. Come on, praise and him. I've never had to stand one chest all alone. Whoa. When I look at all the victories, and my spirit rises up within me, and it's through the fire a weakness is made strong. Oh, praise him, church. He never promised that, that your cross would not get, get heavy, heavy, and your hill would not be hard to fly. here been having a lot of pain in your right side. It goes all the way across, but it, it seems to lodge right in here. Amen. If you'll come tonight, God's going to touch your body by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Anybody? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. A little part of your stomach on your right side. Anybody? Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody here. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go away just one more moment. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands and love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, by the name of Jesus. I believe it's going to be better. Hallelujah, that torment. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That job. Things. Hallelujah. It's just not going to wear you out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Still, somebody has had a problem in your side. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I'll let this go. Let this go. God, those even watching by the way of internet that's having that problem, let the Spirit of God touch them. God, in the name of Jesus, somebody raise your hands and praise Him. Come on. That your cross would not get heavy. Your guilt would not be hard to climb. He never offered a victory without fighting, but He said, it would always come. She studied for Jada tonight, uh, but she got that tick bite, and she's had such a problem with that, and they've changed her medicine, and it's not working for her, and Sister Jean uh, had surgery today, Sister Jean Arnett had surgery today, and they had to take out a, a big piece, uh, it was cancerous, or it was cancerous, they had to take it out, and, and uh, 
let's just believe God for Sister Jean's body tonight and Sister and Brother Ezzy Harrison lost his mama this evening. So let's pray for the Harrison family that God would give them strength down in Florida. And just ask God to touch all the, and Brother Jeff Jones in this tonight. And remember my daddy, they said that he had cancer. They found out cancer this, they, this week, okay? So let's believe God. Father, right now, God, you see my daddy. You see Brother Ezzy. God, you see Sister Jada. God, you see Sister Jean. But God, we know that you are God. And Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Pray that God will speak to Brother Wayne for about a 50-night revival. At least get 20 of them in. Somebody shout hallelujah. God, I can't wait to get back. When you fight, just you say, God, I can't wait to get back to church. God, I just can't wait. God, we can have a little meeting right here just for a moment. God will bless you like that. Let me believe that. Amen. Let me have been blessed tonight to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Been blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 